Chester again and we're going to take out the MT-07 Tracer. Week, but unfortunately they sold the demo last uh, the weekend basically um, so I'll take that out in the future because they've got a new one coming soon but it'd be nice to try the 7 first before the 9 uh, and there is a nice there's a big difference between the two given that this has got the same engine as the MT-07 you know the XSR 700 um, the parallel twin whereas in the 900 as a triple Oops, that didn't take long Yamaha have the um, the horn and the indicator buttons very close to each other and the last time that I rode the, was the XSR 700 with um, with the same arrangement I kept pressing the horn rather than cancelling the gate. I am six foot four as you well know and this is comfortable it's nice. Handling is really nice straight away I feel very comfortable with it but that should uh, that should only improve. It's not as big as I was expecting it to feel. Like, you know, my ass is in the seat and I'm filling the seat. And these, the size of the tanks, are, they stick out quite jaggedly. I think if, yeah, it's a bit weird, but it's not uncomfortable, it's just different. I expect more of a smoother place for my knees. But you do grip onto it really well. Now, differently to my other uh, reviews, I want to get the uh, the controls and the look over the bike done first. Mainly because I'm going past Goodwood and I get to go through the tunnel. Very quiet. I know what these bikes can sound like. This engine can sound immense. But with this stock exhaust on it, it sounds nice, but it's very mute. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, it's not too overstated or anything it's quite understated in places but it's got some nice design features you know like the these little uh, handguard stroke indicator pod type things I mean well not handguards wind deflectors maybe um, they look quite cool so the front ends not too insecty not too buggy looks quite nice I say it's quite understated the exhaust looks nice even though it's far too quiet for my liking the back ends nice and slim it would obviously look a lot better with a tail tidy on it I, I do wonder because I noticed that the spacing of these holes and these holes is the same. I wonder if you can take this part out and just put that directly under there. You probably can. Um, that would be very thought thoughtful if it was that way. Tail light. It's, it's unusual. It's like a little pod. But it still looks good. The quality of everything feels pretty damn good. The plastics are nice and solid. Obviously this is a touring type bike, you know, like the uh, S1000XR and even the BMWs and the V-Strom. It's that group, you know, the longer front suspension, larger, larger bike generally to give you a bit more um, space on it, a bit more height. I'm actually find this comfortably uh, a good seat height. It could even be slightly higher for me. It feels somewhere between a sports bike and a supermoto on the seat height, so you'll, you'll feel like you're on top of it, but not quite as much as a supermoto where you feel really high up in the air. It's kind of somewhere in between, which is nice, because it gives you that... You feel like you're more within the bike for cornering, but you still get that high vantage point, which is very nice to have. Very, very basic. High beam, low beam, indicate left, right, and cancel, and as I say, the horn is very close to that, and I hit it regularly. Uh, flasher start stop hazard switch but that's all there is there a couple of buttons on here to change for a couple of bits of information but otherwise very basic you know revs across the bottom gear position indicator fuel amount time speed no faff with that at all exactly what you want to see and nothing else and i really do like that something that really has surprised me for this style of bike is that it only has a side stand it doesn't have a center stand you know it's not crucial but it's surprising. I'm sure this underbelly exhaust has something to do with that. Uh, but on my XJ6, that had an underbelly exhaust and it still had a centre stand. Um, maybe it's to save on weight. I mean, I admit I, I can't see quite how you'd fit a centre stand in there. But it surprises me for this style of bike that it doesn't have that. 
But uh, it's all about riding, so let's get riding and see what it feels like more so than we already have. There we go, raise the screen right up. Let's see if I can get some wind protection out of this. You know this engine if you know the MT-07. And it's, it's got a good low down grunt, lots of grunt. They in fact extended the swing arm on the uh, Tracer to stop it being so wheelie happy, I believe. Good turning circle on it. This does sort of feel like somewhere between a supermoto and a sports tourer. Yep. I completely put down the horn thing to my big fat fingers, but the two buttons are very, very close together. I'm sure, you know, you, you get used to it over time. The seating position is very, very upright, I mean bolt upright. With my length of my arms, they're just slightly curved, which is incredibly comfortable for me. The suspension's probably a little firmer than I was expecting, you know, it's, it does feel pretty firm. You get a few bumps from the bumps, but generally, you get good feedback with it, and it's pleasant. This would be an absolutely awesome commuter bike because you've got the high vantage point over cars so you can see what's going on. You've got that good turning angle. It's not too big, it's not very fat. So getting through traffic's not a problem. And that low down grunt, you know, off the lights between junctions and stuff, would be great fun. I always do this, whenever I uh, come down this way to review a bike, I always end up in traffic. But at least we are uh, testing some sides of it that I wouldn't naturally choose to test. But are oh, very realistic into uh, everyday riding, obviously. This bike has no fancy bits, no gadgets, uh, no traction control or anything like that. It has got ABS, obviously, so 2017, it has to have that. But otherwise, it's a you ride it machine, and they are the best. So, you know, if you add up all these things, it's a machine which you ride and you have responsibility for its power and its control as you hand it out. It's a smaller engine, so you get to use more of it. It's of a comfortable riding position, which is somewhere, feels, as I say, somewhere between a, a big supermoto and a sports tourer. So, on paper, this thing should be great. Unfortunately, I'm not on paper, I'm on the road and also one full of cars. The wing mirrors are an interesting shape. Because they're quite thin and long, you actually do get a very good view of what's going on behind you. you know, more than just you know the car's there, you can see both sides of the car. It's, uh, they're good. I like them. It's got great pull out of the corners, cruises really nicely, you know, that's just the 60 mark when you're on the country roads, that's very pleasant, it's not a lot of vibrations through the bike or anything, you get a good rumble from the engine when you're getting up to speed, but once you're there, you know, it's very comfortable, it's good. It is incredible how much they've quietened this engine down, considering I know what it can sound like with a decent can on it. The front end does feel very light, like the steering, you know, it's, it's not heavy at all, it's, it's got that lightness that you get from a supermoto which gives it this flickableness. If you, if, I should explain, the reason I'm saying supermoto here is because I ride a supermoto as well as a, an XJ6 and I love both sides of those two bikes and this is somewhere in the middle which is nice. It's so light. This is, I'm really liking this so far. I wish I could actually get on some roads out all this traffic on it, but just playing around back here, I'm enjoying myself. Wind protection, yeah, I'm just too tall, I think. I can't actually find a sweet spot. You see, engine braking. 
it's strong. It's got a nice gearbox, it's very positive, very good clicks, downshifts. It's not too much throw in it, it's, it only feels about that much, so you'll really click, 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 click. And that's nice because it means you know that you're in gear. Gotta get away from that traffic. Oh, I've picked the bumpiest road in the world, it would seem. I've got to that point where you start to, you know, get the feel for a bike and you know what it's what it's about, what it's like. And it is a it's a Larry little thing. It's definitely Larry. It's just go pretty much all the time. But if it's really, really smooth with it, it cruises comfortably. The rear suspension feels good to me. Um, it's not pinging me too much. I'm wondering if the front's a little bit soft. Because, well, not soft, I don't know, it's, it's a weird combination of it feeling a bit bouncy, but at the same time feeling firm. We found ourselves in deep sand. <laughs> I'm really interested in trying the 9 now. Very much so. I am enjoying this bike. I'm enjoying this engine quite a lot. The ride is, as I say, it's a little bit bumpy. It's a little bit hoppy. But we are on some pretty gnarly little country roads. <laughs> The brakes aren't the most powerful in the world, but they are usable. There are a set of brakes which you can really latch onto and use, you know. You don't feel too worried about doing that. They're not instantly hitting you. But they definitely slow you down. I don't know where I'm going, but this feels like a nice way to go. directions that would be helpful the church and the school <laughs> well you know we're in a small area that's worth um, hmm <laughs> I have found the most quintessentially English looking bit of the world I think I possibly could This is the one thing, right, this is a lovely bike to ride, I've no denying that, and the engine is great, but this ride is, on these sorts of roads, is a little bit unpleasant almost. It's so bouncy and jarry. I want to get it onto some normal streets that aren't like this and see uh, how it fares there, because I've got a feeling this is going to do very well on those flatter roads. Oh. See, that's what I didn't want right in the bottom of that corner was a jolt like that. Right, we are finally out of those tiny country roads. I think this is where this is going to be suited much more. Smoother roads, less big bumps. Yeah, see, instantly it feels like a, a different bike because the suspension is not pinging you around. See here, it feels totally different. It feels fun and much more planted. You know, through that sort of stuff, totally different feeling bike. 
it's, it feels planted and it feels secure and it turns nicely and it becomes a really, really pleasant bike to ride. I can't believe that it feels so different when you hit a few bumps. It is a real shame. The engine though is great, you know, you can pull hard through a couple of gears, three gears, and you're not going silly speeds. So it feels very usable and very fun. And as I say, it is light, but it's maybe it's that lightness plus this firm suspension that gives it that bumpiness in the more bumpy roads. Engine braking is great. And that, that grunt is addictive. It's nice, it's not a scary amount. It's a good amount, it's a usable amount. Right, well I can draw a conclusion on this bike now. Having used it in several different areas, I've been through the city, I've been on the motorway a bit, I've been through the country roads on flat roads, and I've been through the country roads on bumpy roads. This is a brilliant bike, it really is. The engine is really punchy, but it hasn't got too much power, you know, it's a really usable amount of power, it's fun. The brakes are good, they're not too sudden, so you can actually, you know, use them with confidence. The seat position is great. Um, the looks are good, the comfort is good, its ability to cruise on the motorway is excellent. You put it in sixth gear and it just cruises along very, very smoothly. It's a fantastic sort of middle ground between a few different styles of bikes. Bike. Great for touring, great for commuting, great for having fun on. My only criticism is that the suspension is... It's weird when you get onto really bumpy roads. It's jumpy and it's... It's bouncy and it, for me, it might be different for you, this is very much a personal thing. It's a little bit disconcerting just because when you're going through the corners, you know, you don't expect to suddenly go boom like that from a bump that can sort of throw you off a bit. Now that sounds bad, but it's not because it only applies to the bumpiest of country roads. General town riding and stuff like that, this thing is awesome and it feels like a completely different bike at that point. And that's where, as I say, I think the suspension is set up far more for flat city roads you know jumping between junction to junction and set of lights to set of lights for that and for us like, even for just riding through some normal sweepy country roads great fun great great fun only disappointment is as i say how how bouncy it can be in the uh, more bumpy roads but that has not taken much away from how good that thing is and now i'm very excited to try the uh the nine. Anyway, thank you to Freestyle Yamaha. Really appreciate the loan of the bike. I will be back to try out the nine soon. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you soon.